Good morning, everybody. Happy Bastille Day, July 14th, 2024. If you don't know what Bastille Day was, that was uh, part of the ill-fated uh, French Revolution where the uh, peasants with pitchforks, scythes, knives, and uh, clubs stormed the Bastille where the prisoners were, political prisoners were being held. What a mess. Nothing ever good came out of that uh, that revolution. Except maybe, uh, what the hell is the name of that uh, Broadway show, Les Miserables? I guess that's the best thing it ever came out of it. And uh, I hope you're having a good morning from Las Vegas. It's about 102 and humid already. I thought I would treat myself and do a little bit of an indoor uh morning vlog here obviously a lot of stuff is going on with the uh, shooting of former president and candidate uh, Donald Trump and I have to say and a couple of people have uh, you know yes that's true I mean several weeks ago two to three weeks ago I spoke and said uh, I've never seen things in this nation uh, reach a point where uh, People were, people were just vociferous and almost becoming violent in their opinions in this nation because, well, they're in a lot of ways, they're scared of the democratic process, okay? They're scared of what uh, a free and open election might hold. And there's been a lot of things done over the last few years I don't really agree with in terms of, uh, you know, to me, you should be able to have verifiable identification when you show up to vote to, that proves uh, that you're registered and that you live within that area. This, uh, uh, these things like mail-in ballots and things, I mean, of course there's exceptions when people are, uh, are disabled and things, you have to make exceptions for that. But if I say, if you're too lazy to make it on election day and know oh, this excuse I work or whatever, well, the polls are open a, a significant period of time, and in the whole course of our republic, it seems like people made the effort to go and vote. If it's important to you, you make the effort to do it. We can make all these excuses. And these uh, drop-off ballot boxes that you see in L.A. and uh, even see them here in, uh, in Santa Rosa and places like that. Man, uh, I always worry the potential for trouble. I'm not saying something ever happened, but I'm just saying, man, how far afield we have come when uh, voting has turned into such a complicated affair that in my, where I live now in Santa Rosa, California, when they do a, a vote, they're like, oh, sometimes it takes a week to 10 days to get the results in. <laughs> I grew up in Baltimore City, had well over a million people when I was young, and you would find out uh, that night we had the old voting booth where you'd go in and pull the pull the lever and close the curtain and do the vote. It's amazing how fast we could get it done in the old analog days. And now we're all stymied by all this nonsense of counting uh, mail-in ballots and all this uh, and all this crap. All this. So it's not it's no wonder we have the mess we do today. And then because the political winds are shifting and people are getting tired, evidently, and I'm an, I'm an independent. So, which means I'm pretty good at observing both sides of the, uh, both sides of the aisle here. And I see that a lot of people want to start shifting to, they want to start undoing some of the stuff that they see as radicalism that's undermined this nation over the last uh, 20 years ago. And some people are violently opposed to that, right? They don't want to go back to that. There's some people that embrace anarchy and we don't need any government at all. And God help us if we ever get, if that wish ever comes true in this nation. Your wish for anarchy will die within about the, the, the third week after you're assaulted on the, uh, on the streets because people know there's no more force of government. And of course, uh, the most effective force for governing has always been uh, people governing and civilized enough to police themselves. When that starts to break down, you got real problems. The thing that astounds me is I've seen values shift over my lifetime from the from the wild uh, 1960s of uh, the rise of early liberalism and and uh, postmodernism. 
things are what they I say that they are. There's no more objective truths in the world, and truth is whatever I claim it to be. And uh, those were the early days. We kind of survived that, and then we went into the more considered conservative early 1980s and went through that period and then we got into the 2000s and the 2010s and through the pandemic and we had this radicalized uh, shifting to the left and I guess before we you know we survived all that in a nation with that going nuts and with that losing our minds but I think we've become so corrupt as a nation now and so so enfeebled in terms of our uh, morals and things like that, that we can no longer even think that there's anything value in conservative uh, morals and traditions, things like the Ten Commandments. And I think back to 1963 when the Supreme Court uh, ruled uh, supporting a case by, uh, I think it was Curlett versus the Baltimore City Board of Education where the Bibles were removed from uh, school. And, uh, you know, I'm a firm believer in separation of church and, uh, and uh, state, but to deny that we had a heritage of people that were moral as founders of this nation is just an outright, it's an outright fabrication. But anyway, look at how far we have come in the 60 years since that ruling. Look at how far downhill this nation has become to the point that you have certain states like Louisiana, which are... Uh, so desperate to try to stem the tide of people's uh, people's behaviors, and I had the story that I had on my community page from uh, a snapshot of Bloomberg's article about the transit police of New York have to hire behavioral specialists because 900,000 people a month aren't paying the uh, fares. It's too late. Right, the ridiculousness of trying to change people's behaviors when it's already ingrained to them as an adult, the big deal, I jumped the turnstile, so what? They don't need my uh, my $2 or whatever. Well, when 900,000 people begin to think the same way, then we have a problem supporting a public utility for uh, the uh, all the people, right? So I don't think that there's anything particularly wrong. I mean, it's funny, in 1963, after uh, 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 Madeleine Murray O'Hare uh, succeeded through her son in getting the Bible removed from uh, schools, that uh, Life magazine conducted a poll in, uh, a few months later, and she was, uh, they, uh, she was declared on the cover to be the most hated woman in America, and in that time, it probably probably was not far from the truth. If you fast forward today, I think it's ironic that the most hated person in America today would probably be the woman that sued and somehow or another won to get the Bible reading back in schools today. She would be the most hated. And I think to myself, what a distance we have covered. And then we look around in society today and we wonder, why are people behaving the way they're acting? Why do we have smash and grabs? Why do we have zero family structures in uh, uh, you know, the health of this nation? The physical health has deteriorated and 41% of the pop population, according to the uh, uh, American Psychological Association, has sort of some sort of mental health afflictions. And I think to myself, how did we ever get along before? All of this. I mean, my goodness, made such great stride forwards and things like that. Well, now I think that we know, we know the answer, and it's because, uh, you know, the not inculcating the values and things uh, in our young, and now we can see that that uh, we have generations of now feral adults raising feral children with no concept of. Uh, ethics or morality and things like that. So it becomes like a dog-eat-dog -dog world uh, where nobody can nobody can uh, abide having their goodies stripped away from them anymore or being told, no, you shouldn't do that, but th this is why. I think we've lost that link between uh, the criticalness of uh, uh, a moral basis and civilization itself. And now we see that civilization uh, is... Uh, 
crumbling beneath our feet and people just bemoan the fact nobody's nice to anybody anymore people don't hold the door anymore uh, people just speak so badly on social media and the, the trolls are out of control and things like that well it's pretty obvious to me what's changed over the last uh, 60 years or so which means now the idea that there may be conservative and they'll talk about Christian nationalism and stuff like that and they'll say uh, this Christian nationalists are a threat to the nation. No, it's not the Christian nationalists. It's the values they espouse of uh, family and uh, uh, you know and, and morality in society. The, use, the things that we used to hold dear right until 60 years ago everybody was agreed on that and then look at how rapidly things have gone to shit since everybody takes it into their own hands with their postmodern subjectivism to decide what's right and what's wrong and nothing's a fact anymore and it just all this lunacy uh, uh, kind of broke out but you're defeating the purpose of what it means to be in a free society you know? because you do have the right to hold free election and people do have just as much right to hold conservative opinions as they do liberal opinions. And their vote counts as much as the person that uh, offsets. The liberal vote counts as much as the conservative vote is at the ballot. You vote, it, you vote fairly and you abide by whatever the, uh, whatever, the, whatever the vote is, right? You don't gnaw on it call people names on the other side because they support this candidate or that candidate. They're, they're, they're exercising their right to think independently and to think about the future of this nation for their children, their grandchildren, and posterity behind that. But we have too many people today that uh, think to themselves, well, I don't care about the future. What has posterity ever done for me, right? What do I care? Let them let them fend for themselves and uh, and all. So we've had this this tremendous cult of selfishness that's risen up over the last, uh, particularly in the last twenty years or so. Well, you know, some people would say we're trying to claw that back. There are some people that are trying to claw that back now, and they're fighting very hard to. Uh, do that. In other words, the elections are not always about economics. They're not always about international politics. Sometimes they're about values as a nation. And we look and we see some of the values that serve this nation well and they're tossed aside now and people logically think, logically, rationally think, if we can bring those same values back again into society, then so much the better for our society in the future. Not flawed thinking in my, uh, in my opinion. So that's the way I see things. I see that the shooter was identified, um, 20 year old uh, man. I mean, what, what a li wasted life uh, for this kid. But that's how, that's how prepossessed people can become in their minds that they're so narcissistic that they think that they're the ones that are going to change history and they're the ones that are going to make the world uh, different or whatever. In other words, they elevate their own their own choices as above everybody else in society. Supreme narcissism at its finest. And uh, thank goodness the Secret Service, I guess, uh, sh should have done better in some ways in pre prevention. But uh, luckily the president uh, lived, and I would say the same thing. I've seen Democrats uh, get struck down in my lifetime. Uh, candidates, George Wallace in Maryland at the shopping mall in, Mar in Maryland in 1968 had gone down and made a cripple for the rest of his life. I mean, I've seen it all in my years. I've seen it all. Okay, President Ford and things like that. So I know... Um, People, people can go off the rails and that's the price that you pay in a free society where we have people that can come out on the streets and meet people and campaign and things like that. Uh, so, as far as I'm concerned, you're going to think, I got this discoloration on my knee, but I'm doing so much better uh, today. Mr. Z gave me some uh, ibuprofen last night. And that took, that took so much of the swelling down that I'm able to uh, 
uh, begin walking pretty well now, and I'm hoping tomorrow I'm going to be uh, good to go. So thank you for those who have asked. A lot of people saw my record-breaking Las Vegas, the, uh, the most extreme heat live stream, continuous live streaming. And that doesn't mean you go out when it's 124 degrees and you have a camera and you do a live stream for five minutes until your camera shuts down. That means keeping a live stream going outside for six to eight plus hours on the street continuously at 100 and 115 degree plus temperatures up to 118 degrees. How is it possible? So many people have written me and asked. If you're going out to live stream with a conventional phone, you're not gonna make it. Live streaming uses so much processing power to take that visual image, convert it to digital, take the sound added on, up, upshoot that through the uh, cell connection to the towers. That takes a tremendous amount of continuous uh, uh, computing power. And what that does is over time is it, is it heats up the processor gradually till it reaches a point where you have what's called thermal shutdown. And your phone will just shut down, your apps will turn off. Okay, and that will happen. Now to prevent that from happening, you only have really have one choice, and that is to have electronic cooling to the back of your phone by clipping on what's called an electronic cooler. And these are available for uh, phones. This was gifted to me by my wonderful friend and moderator, Shimei. It has electronic cooling built in it. You can see the two little fans there. And the back of it, these all become icy cold here. And it's the same principle that helps run dorm refrigerators and things like that. They don't have compressors, they use electronics. And you also need a battery pack. Besides the battery pack, it's going to run your, uh, your phone and keep your phone charged. You're gonna need a battery pack that is going to be dedicated to just allow the cooler to be run independently plugs in there with the type C cord and goes into your power block like so and then if you see on the front of it you see the little blue light come on and if you go to touch the back of it this gets very cold after about five minutes I mean really cold and you need that to draw that heat away from the processor and this is this is the only thing that's allowed me to go out and break heat records with continuous live streaming and things like that. Now, I have to end with a um, disclaimer and a caveat. I have been injured on this trip, as you see. I went down hard wearing my very dark shades here. Went down very hard, didn't see a curb, down, smashed, smashed off the, the selfie stick holder top. Uh, looks like I apparently, uh, maybe I didn't crack the screen, but I have a big crack across it. My battery went flying. I mean, the, the, the potential for in injury when you're street streaming, apart from all the bad stuff that can happen to you on the streets, the potential for injury is high and out here I took every precaution I could in terms of packing in uh, tremendous quantities of water, making myself take water or hydration breaks every 15 minutes, seeking out shade islands, I call, every 10 minutes or so, trying to find a place where I can get in, out of the direct uh, sun. Once your core temperature rises to a certain point, you can become delirious, you can, uh, you can be incapable of making rational decisions. You can just keel over and uh, just pass out, and unless you get emergency help, you can die. I often have people will write me that their sons or daughters uh, went out there, they've seen some streams, they've seen my stream, and say, oh, this is gonna be really cool. This is no challenge for records and things like that, okay? The areas I go into, the potential for well, the potential for violence is, is always very high in most of these areas. 
and I have my moderators will always put disclaimers on the live stream as it's going to do not uh, do not do this okay um, it's really uh, you know you can say well you're really experienced you got good street sense you were born and raised in Baltimore you're a hood rat yeah I mean that stuff helps a lot but you never know you never know yeah I carry pepper spray and stuff like that but uh, with the heat especially uh, if you go out ill prepared and you trip like I did and you're unable to walk and you're in an abandoned house like I am that's been it's been uh, basically torched by fire and you're in the middle of this property and nobody's around and nobody's going to hear you or anything and if you go down you knock yourself out or you fall onto a spike or a, a, a you know fall onto some drug needles or something like that you're going to be in a world of hurt okay and the potential for you dying out there is going to be very 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 high so I put that disclaimer on to think about what you're doing uh, very very much some people climb Mount Everest. Some people put on bat wing suits and drop, jump off the side of 1,500 foot cliffs. Some people go down in submersible submarines and implode, right? Everybody has their own little passion. And those of us that are thrill seekers, we enjoy our own passion, right? It's just that mine happens to be street live streaming in extreme situations be it extreme heat ex extremely bad neighborhoods things like that i enjoy the you know it's my own mount everest in a way but it's my thing not 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 uh, your thing so the worst people thing is when people emulate oh yeah wow you know tens of thousands of views on that live stream shit that thing was rocking but uh, just understand I want to be clear because I don't like to get all the uh, Gmails and things from people that are, uh, are upset and uh, stuff like that. Okay, so uh, you know, if it was a family member of mine, I would tell them I'm not letting you go down in a submarine. <laughs> okay, but so I'm not getting you. I'm not letting you go in a helicopter either. So, but if you do want to run your have your phone useful in. Uh, in uh, hot weather, I don't know what to make of, but you can see it when you look at phone coolers, uh, smartphone coolers, you'll see things like this on the back, and you'll see things like that listed on Amazon and sites like that, and they will help you a lot. Hey, look, extreme live streaming is a blast for me, right? Pushing myself to the edge of endurance is, is amazing. It hits every bone in my body the right way, but but. You don't do things just because somebody else does it. You do things because you have a passion for it, okay? And when you start doing things that aren't within your scope of competency, then you get yourself in all kinds of, uh, you get yourself in all kinds of uh, potential problems. I leave, when I go out on my, I leave with no less than about 10 pounds of gear hanging on me to be able to survive, especially in summertime. As we close it out, yeah, it's been ugly. It's going to be red, white, and blue over the next couple weeks. But you know what? The swelling is down. We have got no internal infection. Infection. I've been walking pretty well. Mr. Z gave me the use of a uh, cane there, which has been very helpful for hobble cocking around uh, last night and today. Many of you have written and inquired how I'm doing to make sure I'm doing okay. Some of you said it's time to go home. Look, our adventure's just beginning down here, right? We got, uh, I believe we have many more uh, street streams coming ahead. Tonight's going to be a Demi win. We're going to be on that on Fremont Street. We're going to be walking around. Uh, we're going to come back. I get a sandwich. I got a beer. We're going to have a good time. Uh, a good time tonight. I hope that you will join me. And anyway, anyway, prayers for uh, President Trump for a rapid and speedy recovery. Prayers for all our presidents and former uh, presidents. I really enjoyed the fact when I grew up, once the president got elected, we were with that president. We might not have liked every decision that president made 
But we understood that that president was fairly elected, and we said, for better or worse now, this is our president, and we have to support him for the best from uh, to the best of our ability. We knew no other way except when political season would open the fourth year, we'd have the jabs and the fighting, but after the elections, we would always come together. We would put it to the side. It just seems like now we're totally unable to uh, stitch ourselves together here. We're so invested in our position. But trust and believe at the end of the day, it's what you and I do that builds society. Not a guy sitting in the White House or, or in Congress. We choose to police ourselves and make small micro decisions that in the, that in the aggregate add up to the creation of a better society. When we start to just look out for number one, our whole society turns into number two. All right, on that note, Please, uh, please give a thumbs up. It is appreciated. Happy Sunday to all of you. If you're not subscribed, subscribe and hit the bell for all notifications. We're chugging forward here. Well in our 12th year here on YouTube. Thanks, everybody.